Hello everyone, welcome again to the channel. Today I want to share with you uh, this story um, started with an interview from the Washington Post. Uh, they interviewed um, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and the interview is um, I don't like all the points, even some of the questions are a little bit strange, but uh, I will tell you what is my opinion about it. So the person who interviewed uh, the, pres the president of Ukraine, I think is Isabel Kurshudian, I think that's her in the photo. And <clears throat> So the first question is, when CIA Director William J. Burns met with you here in Kiev in January, one of the things he told you was that the Russians will attempt a landing at the airport in Hostomel. What was your reaction when that actually happened in, on February 24? Should there have been more Ukrainian forces already there? And what... Um, what Zelensky says is that um, they were already somehow on alert, they already knew, I mean the Russian forces were in the border already uh, for a long time, it was not like it happened from one day to the other, so he says that they knew about that and he says that they were helping, they were asking for help to our partners, that's what he says. And they had some kind of plan if they were going to attack specific places or they say they already had all these maps uh, of uh, what was the way that the Germans invaded during World War II. So they say that uh, they had everything they that uh, they could have at the bomb at the moment. So whatever troops were there in in February 24, it was the troops that uh, Ukraine already had, and so they he's kind of signaling that they were as prepared as they could be. And one of the things that he was mentioning is what. Uh, the CIA told him that uh, they were they were concerned about his life, and um, he said it was not only from the CIA. He says that also from Ukrainian intelligence and other presidents. They were saying, and probably this is the essence of the answer and probably the essence of the story and why it caused uh, so much uh, problem. It seems like um, they have been warning him for a long time and of course even if there were no warnings, no intelligence, there were some signs, uh, you know, the Russian army uh, next to the border for some months and he says that uh, he didn't tell people or he didn't warn them because he was afraid that the economy will suffer and he will he was estimating that the country will lose about three between five billion to seven billion a month and that this will effectively bankrupt Ukraine and it will be unable to pay for the military, pay salaries or all kinds of things. And uh, Somehow, what he's saying makes sense from the most uh, practical point of view because um, let's say that the support of the Western powers to him was kind of a very low level <clears throat> until the, the military operation actually started. So he probably couldn't ask uh, for money or weapons even before things uh, started until they officially started that's when they they 
they continue to increase the support for the government with money and weapons. So that's uh, probably the only thing that is uh, making sense is this, but of course people criticize him for this, but he's a leader of the country, he needs to do uh, difficult decisions, he needs to make difficult decisions, and um, probably the only thing that he also says that he didn't want to leave because um, because he he didn't see himself leaving and then leaving people behind, leaving the country. He was asking for weapons, but he says that they didn't give them. And he kind of uh, criticizes people. I think he has some kind of bail criticism for Biden, because Biden at one point said that they uh, told him that the invasion was coming and he didn't want to listen. So he says, for those who criticize me, if you say the invasion were coming, why didn't you send weapons, you know? So overall, I am very critical of uh, Zelensky, but I think in this particular case, um, he probably did as uh, as well as he could uh, according to the circumstances. I think that every country and every leader has difficult decisions to make, and um, I don't think it will have uh, be good for the country to tell them before, but that is of course uh, what every government does. They don't trust their people and they are afraid of uh, somehow losing power when people start escaping, you know. But I don't think, it's my opinion, that it was not all his fault. Um, at least that's what I think. Uh, any anyway, uh, what he answers is that um, this is strange way of saying things. That uh, because he didn't warn people, uh, that's why the Russians didn't take Kiev, which is of course uh, very nonsensical. Is but it's a story that is repeated all over Western media. There is a strange idea that uh, Russia wanted to take over Kiev and that they were going to do it in three days. He's, uh, and he is saying that because he didn't warn people, that's why Russia didn't succeed. I don't see the connection between those two things, in my opinion. He somehow says that if uh, he saw chaos among people before the invasions, the Russian will devour us because during chaos people flee the country. So I agree with that. Uh, people will certainly flee, but probably most people will have wanted to have the chance to, to do it. And this is the answer that I don't understand. He says that because he didn't warn people some of our people left, but most of them stayed here. They fought for their homes. And as cynical as it may sound, those are the people who stop everything. I disagree completely with that. I don't think people who stayed changed anything. Uh, there was no nothing uh, the people could have done. They have no weapons. What could they have done? It's absolutely nonsensical, this answer. And he somehow says that it was better that happened during February and not during, you know, when it was uh, harder part, hardest part of the winter, because they say that he will have uh, lost the war more easily because there was a shortage of energy resources. So it's a very long, very strange um, answer and. Uh, the main thing is that uh, he said that uh, if he's, he warned the population before, they will have taken money away from the bank, they will have uh, escaped. So I think as a government that needs soldiers for the war, that for him will have been, of course, uh, 
impossible to prevent because if there was no um, state of emergency, the government doesn't have uh, the authority to prevent anyone from leaving the country. So that's probably the biggest part of the answers that he gave. And then uh, the next question is, so did you personally believe full-scale war was coming? And the answer is uh, a little bit strange again. Um, he says that uh, he thought it was possible, but he didn't think it was, it was going to happen in the way it happened. And of course, um, he said that uh, they, they don't have the weapons to do this. Uh, so he says, why do we need all these warnings if we didn't get the weapons to stop them? He mentions the fact that um, they basically had uh, all weapons, Soviet time weapons, and that all the recent weapons from NATO only started to come after the conflict actually started. So he says, why do I need to make our society go crazy? And he mentions again the money. Of course, I understand that from the point of view of the state, the money is important. But people were still withdrawing money from the banks. Uh, he said that there were some statistics that uh, Ukrainians were withdrawing more money than it was coming into the country. So some people saw it coming. That's uh, what happened. And of course, there was uh, probably currency devaluation. And overall, I think he says that um, he did as best as he could. Uh, he tried to be honest about it. I, I don't see his actions so despicable. I don't think he, he did something completely... Um, and then something that cannot be understood. I think as a person, as an individual, you are not making the same decision as the leader of a country. So I think politicians are selfish in that particular way. But uh, one hopes that the decisions they make are for the, for the better of uh, the country, that they are supposed to take the concerns of saving as many lives as possible. So I don't know, because it's possible, impossible to judge what will happen. It's impossible to assess uh, what difference will have made. And for sure, people will have had panic. I don't, I don't think is uh, in question that. So the next question is, um, I understand concerns about sowing panic and tanking the economy. But what would you say to those Ukrainians who now say, I would have wanted to evacuate my family or just be better prepared? And uh, is, is uh, basically saying the same thing about the banks, uh, about the economy. He says that they couldn't prevent people from taking money out or leaving. And he, he says that he didn't tell me, he didn't tell people about uh, the information he had about uh, maybe the Russians were going to kill him. And um, he answers that he decided to stay. So I think what he's saying is that um, basically one big answer uh, with many words, he's saying that he was concerned about the economy and he was concerned that there will be panic. And the only thing that he gives additional information is that um, he decided to stay and he didn't leave when the invasion started. The next question is, if the United States knew for sure that a full-scale invasion was coming, did it give you enough weapons to defend yourself? And uh, is what I already mentioned, that uh, he's uh, grateful for the guns and weapons, they say, but uh, he says that uh, he didn't have enough weapons, and only recently they started to give uh, Ukraine weapons. But I don't think it would have made any difference, because uh, actually the, um, 
the military operations started as a surprise, even if there were signals of something, the actual events that took place in February 24 occurred as a surprise, so it was a surprise attack. So even if they had uh, many more weapons, if they were NATO weapons or whatever, it wouldn't have made any difference. Ukraine lost more of their weapon systems, uh, air force and everything on the first two or three days. So I don't think any difference would have been made by more or less weapons. Uh, it's what it is, but um, he is saying uh, the same thing that uh, he didn't have enough uh, money to buy weapons and I think the only thing they bought were drones and he mentions the fact that when the invasion started he asked for this uh, thing that they wanted to close the sky which was uh, declaring a no-fly zone over Ukraine and if you remember back in the day February March this was the whole thing that he wanted because that's exactly what allowed the Russian military to destroy most of the weapon systems that Ukraine had. Uh, when you have Air Force, you go fast and you destroy as many things as possible in a very short time. And right now, it, it doesn't make any difference and it didn't happen because NATO didn't want to get involved. It will have implied a direct confrontation with Russia, and that didn't happen, so there is no point in asking what will have happened because it didn't happen. So it's not possible to ask about something that already is in the past. So the next question is, did you ever get an explanation for why you weren't supplied with more weaponry? And again, he doesn't answer, um, but it's, I think it's a fair question, um, and I think uh, probably there is no clear, clear answer, because, for example, if uh, this is some kind of a conspirational um, question and answer, and he doesn't answer directly, because if uh, you consider that NATO and all the European Union countries had the best interest of Ukraine and they really wanted Ukraine to win the conflict and they had all this intelligence and all this information, it's a fair question. Why didn't they send weapons before? They didn't. You know, they could have done it probably unimpeded. They could have done it... Uh, even with uh, ships uh, full of weapons, uh, trains full, train loads full of weapons, uh, they didn't do it. You know, if they had in the intelligence, why they didn't they do it? The only thing that Zelensky asks is, I have no complaints, uh, and uh, he's saying that he's uh, grateful, and now he's saying, uh, send us weapons. So that's all, you know, he says, give us weapons, but apparently they didn't give him any weapons. The main thing is that um, he says that nobody wanted uh, a war with Russia. So probably that's the main point. That's why they didn't, they didn't want to get involved, but they could have sent weapons before and they didn't. That's probably um, completely right. And the last question, I think, uh, or it says uh, the next question regarding Kherson, what can be done to prevent Russia from holding a referendum? What are you asking from your Western partners right now to help you stop it? Uh, this is a stupid question, in my opinion. There's nothing to be done to prevent uh, holding a referendum. And then the answer is, of course, uh, very nonsensical. He says that all they can do is uh, putting sanctions, and he's talking about uh, this proposal that he wants so all Western countries to stop Russians from coming, like a bad travel ban. 
he wants to punish uh, regular citizens of Russia because he thinks that they also are accountable for the actions of their government. And he says that the solution is that you know, to, to take this uh, particular uh, approach, you know. Yes, so it's a very long answer, but um, he's saying that if by hurting the Russians, uh, they will somehow put pressure on on the government, and that's what will have happened. And then comes a follow-up article also from the Washington Post, where they... Uh, this article is from today, August 19th, and um, they kind of summarize the um, reaction of their, over the interview, the interview that we just mentioned, and um, it kind of says that Ukrainians are somehow disappointed uh, about Zelensky, and um, he says that they say that uh, they should have uh, told told the population about what was coming, and they criticized Zelensky for saying that he was concerned about the state of the economy. He was concerned there will be panic. He was concerned that um, I don't know people will have uh, crashed the economy and uh, losing seven billions a month for many months will have crashed the economy. And then there is this guy, um, a journalist, Bogdan Bukkevich, he says he didn't want to put the country on a military footing because he was afraid of losing power. That is true, but that's what governments do. They want to keep power. I think uh, Zelensky is not especially bad because of that. And then there is a Ukrainian author, Katerina Babkina. She says the lack of warning for civilians living in the threatened areas, and especially those with children, the elderly, and those with impaired mobility, was not a glitch, not a mistake, not an unfortunate misunderstanding, not a strategic miscalculation. I think, uh, and she finishes and she says, it is a crime. So, I disagree with that. I think, uh, like I said before, that the uh, president has to make a uh, difficult decisions and he could not just say people you know you know the invasion is coming and please stay calm it, unfortunately it doesn't work like that i'm a civilian and i understand you know the probably the reaction of people but uh, i think he did as best as he could considering the circumstances i'm not saying he's perfect i'm not saying he couldn't have done better but um, is uh, just what it is. And then comes this, uh, uh, he's a publicist, his name is Valery Pekar, and he teaches at the Kiev Mohila Business School. And he says, anyone who did not pack his own rucksack after reading the news about American intelligence report has no right to claim that he was not warned. We all knew and understood that war was coming. We just didn't want to believe it because it's too terrible to be true. This is probably the only uh, logical declaration of all this article. Uh, people need to see the signs. And like they say, the signs were already there. People didn't want to believe it, um, but the signs were already there for many months. You had months, uh, every civilian in Ukraine had months to prepare for this. And if they didn't do it, it's their own personal responsibility, you know. Why didn't people see the signs and uh, reacted? You know, they kind of thought, oh, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to happen, everything's going to be okay. And that's what, uh, what really happened, you know. So people criticizing him is uh, a little bit out of place 
of course, they say there were steps that could have been taken to alleviate the impact on the invasion, from preparing blood banks to digging trenches along the northern border to prevent Russian troops from running many towns and villages before they were halted outside Kiev. Uh, I think the only part that I agree with is the part where they say about preparing blood, blank, blood banks. But digging trenches, you cannot start digging trenches months in advance because you don't know when the invasion will take place. So if you are digging a trench means uh, you are going to close the roads and you cannot close the roads for months because you, don't, you are not sure when will that happen. I mean, in these uh, times, it's not possible to just uh, close everything without uh, having a certainty, you know. And then the last one is this woman, Oksana, who says uh, Ukraine is winning because of our belief in the president and our armed forces, so I'm ready to wait for the explanation after we win the war. So that's it. It was, uh, um, I think, an interesting story. And let me know what you think about it. And as always, I want to remind you about the opportunity to help me support my work as content creator. In the description of each episode, I include information about uh, different uh, platforms you can use to support me with donations. If you want to, you can also support my work by liking, sharing the episode in social media, or subscribing. I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you for watching.